Welcome to the Grim Leftover Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz. Oh, yeah. Happy 420, y'all. Y'all out there doing what you're supposed to do on 420? I would hope so. <laughs> you know, it's 420 all month because this is April 2020, but uh, today is 420. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's April 20th, 2020. So welcome to the show, everybody. This is the Grim Leftover Show. I am Grimner, your host here on this particular program. And we're live right now. Well, if you're listening to it live anyway, uh, if, you're, if you're listening uh, to it later on a podcast, well, just pretend it's 420 and do the right thing that you would do at 420 on any particular day. You know what that is, don't you? All right, so, yeah, we're live on RealLibertyMedia.com on the uh, Grim Leftover Show page. We're live on RLMRadio.xyz, also on FreedomsNetwork.com and RealLiberty.org, as well as on TuneIn. Uh, I assume, I, had, I noticed a little issue there the other day, but uh, it should be worked out by now, I would say, I would think, I do believe. Uh, so, hopefully that's going um anything else on that no i think that's all good i think that's all good uh let me say hi and howdy to all the folks Vinny, doing the right thing all right um <laughs> so uh let's say hi and howdy to all the folks that are here in the chat by the way if you're not over here and in, in the chat on real dot com or rlmradio.xyz uh get on in there get on in jump on in and say hi howdy to the crowd it's always a good time and we have a we have a we have a, a nice group of folks here. We always do. We got the bots and the bodies, as Flash somebody likes to say. Yeah, we do. We got the barman. He's he's a, he's a, my my oldest bot. Uh, and Beetle and myself and the Moose Girls here as well. Miss Kate, hey Kate, Moosey, how you did girls doing? Uh, Anta is here with us, and Azamo Chalcedoni, Miss Circle, Cirque, Cirque. Uh, the, the leftovers are coming, Sock. Just settle down. Um, <laughs> we have Flash, somebody in front of you, Mr. Meister Brow, uh, Prince, who did a, kind of an impromptu show last night uh, with, with a couple of new hosts there. Uh, yeah, Prince and uh, Zippix and um, Grumpy. Well, who's the other guy? I forget. I forget the other guy's name. We got Mr. Rob Works and his mighty bubbler. Yes, indeed. Trust no one. Vanna White and Weathered Orc Butts. The Woodman. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Phantom and um, Because Burge. Not sure who that is. All right. It doesn't matter. You're welcome. Whoever you are, welcome. Uh, we have Toscura. Miss Chloe. Hey, Chloe. How are you? How are you on this fine Kentucky evening? Cyborg Noodle, the E-Man, Ensive, Fury, oh, Fury, that was the other one, and uh, for some reason they were calling him Furry, I'm not sure if he's a furry or not, uh, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with what a furry is, look it up, I'm not telling you, uh, we have Grobbit, JJ's 999, uh, Kiss, Quasi Moto, uh, the real DJT, the re oh, oh, because Burge is EC66. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay. Uh, the real DJT, uh, who's not actually the real DJT, I would assume anyway. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I know he was trying to pretend to be the real DJT, but, uh, you know. The sock puppet. Hey, sock. Uh, smartass. Mr. Graphics. How you doing, Graphics? Hope you're doing all right. The holiest of Rogers, Vin E. The Vincent. He's been missing in action for a week and a half or so. And uh, Zivix, Zivix, all y'all, welcome to y'all. Well, <laughs> oh boy, uh, Zach Puppet's looking up furry on uh, the Urban Dictionary there, and yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm 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 going to avoid it for now. Uh, <laughs> Today was an interesting and fun and exciting day in the oil markets. Yeah. 
Yes, it was. Um, oil, the uh, WTI oil futures market, dropped from where it was last night around the $20 mark or so to negative, negative $36 <laughs> at the close. Negative oil futures. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I got a couple articles here, and I know this is not leftover stuff. This is from today, but uh, I, I feel the importance of this is um, high enough that I, I should discuss it here. Uh, while it's still fresh in the minds of of myself and others, I, I sent out many a tweet about the oil implosion, as it were, today. Uh, and this first one comes from Zero Hedge. And uh, for those of you that may not understand totally exactly what it was, as myself, I, I don't really necessarily understand all this crap. Uh, I, I just um, look at it and read it and try and make sense of it. So here it is from Zero Hedge today. Uh, here is the full explanation behind today's unprecedented negative oil price. Uh, and, and this is actually posted up here, courtesy of IHS Markets Energy Vice President Roger Dewan. Yep. How did you end up, how did I end up? I didn't end up. How did they end up with negative oil prices today? This happens when a physical futures contract finds no buyers close to or at expiry. So, these people, these contracts, well, let him explain. Uh, yes, a physical contract, such as a NYMEX WTI, that's the WTI, it's the West Texas International or Intermediate, West Texas Intermediate, um, <laughs> has a delivery point at Cushing, Oklahoma, and date. In this occurrence, May, which is next month, that's the future. That's the future. So people who hold the contract at the end of the trading window either have to take physical delivery of the oil that they bought on the futures market or, 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 or find, which is a very rare thing, or dump it somehow. It means, and it's very, very rare, very, very rare occurrence. It means that in the last few days of the futures trading cycle, which is tomorrow for May, tomorrow is the end of the May futures trading market, uh, speculative or paper futures positions that start rolling over to the next contract. This is normally a pretty undramatic affair. What is happening today, or what happened today, is trades or speculators who bought the contract and find themselves unable to resell it and have no storage booked to get delivered uh, the, the crude in Cushing, Oklahoma, where the delivery is specified in the contract. This means that all storage in Cushing is booked, and there is no price that they can pay to store it. No price. They can't. They can't. Nobody's. Nobody's going to take their money and store that oil, or they are totally inexperienced in this game, which is a lot of the case today, and are caught holding a contract they did not understand in the full physical aspect as of the time the clock expires. They're hosed. They didn't want that oil. They just wanted to make money off that oil. And, well, too bad, so sad. <laughs> the contract roll and liquidity crunch that made the extreme sell-off today possible, uh, but it doesn't necessarily represent the futures market conditions for the NYMEX in June, which settled at $21.13 today. Got that? You got that? The June markets are still in positive territory. $21.00 which, um, considering recent history, is not a lot. 
Uh, but it's certainly better than negative thirty six dollars. <laughs> and and uh, so what are those people going to do with all that oil? Uh, the June con June contract is not out of the woods either. Today's action indicate that physical oil markets at Cushing are not in good shape, to say the least, and that storage is getting very full. Yeah, yeah. To put it to put it lightly. Uh, they got some charts and graphs here that you may want to take a look at. A decline of over 15% in the June contract price points to real worries that the physical stress will continue to reverberate and will force a lot more production shutdowns during May than the ones announced so far. Hmm. Say hmm with me because, you know, certain people have been pushing for the, for the output to be dropped to a much lower level and 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 certain com countries companies countries whichever uh, uh same thing <laughs> have have refused to do so so far that's right boos hmm <laughs> and this will force them to drop their production output uh, was it a rigged deal? Was it a rigged deal? I'm going to have to say yes. So today, uh, negative prices are the reflection of dire market conditions for producers, with the hope that demand restarted before the middle of May, and that the June contract does not face the same fate. Good luck with all that. I, I say good luck with all that. And, and the next article I have for you, it's, it's going to be... Uh, well, it, it comes from a people that are uh, generally the cheerleaders uh, or one of the one big cheerleader of the oil industry. And it's from oilprice.com, oilprice.com. And to make people feel a little better, uh, because uh, let me just say, <laughs> if oil price remained uh, at, below, or very near to zero, um, the the consequences uh, could be uh, quite dire, quite dire um, for the global financial system. However, it can't. I, I, I mean, think about it. The world runs on oil. Uh, so the world needs oil. It has to have oil to keep operating. Now, at this point in time, with all this corona crap going on, um, there's much less oil being used because, for one, uh, you aren't driving to work or pretty much anywhere else. So that's a lot of oil, uh, consumer-based level oil. Uh, companies, a lot of factories are shut down, shut down. So they're not needing the oil. Uh, and that's all over the world. It's not just here. It's not just in your city or your state or the U.S. of A, but around the world, uh, a lot less oil is being used. Uh, but they kept on producing uh, at pretty much the same levels they'd been producing, uh, which was fine up until now, up until today, uh, when, when uh, there was no place for the oil to go. There's no storage there in Cushing, Oklahoma. <laughs> so so the, these people had these futures contracts they wanted to sell and well nobody was going to buy them because you can't where if, if there's no place for it to go it, it's stupid to buy uh, so yeah okay so this article on oilprice.com here uh, from today why today's 3 300% Oil price crash ain't quite as bad as it seems. Yep. <laughs> Oil price futures slipped into negative territory. Slipped. <laughs> rocketed into negative territory today. A shocking oil market first. Oh, it's never happened before. Uh, yeah, and, and it's not surprising it's never happened before. Because if oil was worth less than zero... Well, there wouldn't be any oil, now would there? Uh, making previous doom and gloom forecasts of OPEC's 
too little, too late production cuts now seem like sober predictions rather than overzealous fear-mongering. But are negative oil prices here to stay? Eh, nah, not so much. Uh, a first time for everything. WTI crude oil futures settled at negative $37.63 per barrel today, down uh, $55.90 on the day. Not only was it the largest price drop for the commodity in history at some point, uh, 305.97%, but it was also the first time that the WTI futures market actually fell below zero. While everyone agrees the oil market has been battling multiple enemies over the last couple of months, uh, namely storage uh, limitations, overproductions, and low prices, today's red line move was brought, ab uh, was brought about by another enemy. Bad timing. Yes, bad timing. Uh, speaking of time, the sharp drop into negative territory for oil futures was brought about by more than just storage limits and overproduction. It's about the timing of the future contracts, which, of course, you know going in. When you sign a contract, you know the, what its due date is. You know all of the conditions of that contract. So it's not so much the timing of the contract. It's the, um, the people looking at it when they're buying these things, thinking everything's going to be just okay. <laughs> Bloomberg, Bloomberg sources suggest that as of last week, the USO held 25% of the outstanding shares of uh, May 2020 WTI oil futures, but that contract ends tomorrow. Buyers of these contracts must either sell the contracts for oil now or take physical delivery of the oil at the end of May. Of course, an ETF like the USO, who deals in paper barrels, is not eager to take physical delivery of any amount of oil, even if they could find somewhere to store it. The result? They must dump their oil, and they must do it now, no matter how much they take it up the ass, uh, no matter what the price. And for those who normally would be willing to take delivery of it, such as refineries and airlines, uh, the stay-at-home orders have pretty much ensured they don't want that May oil contract either. No, they don't want it. They got no place for it either. So what now? Uh, no, the negative oil prices do not mean curtains for the oil industry. As I said earlier, the world runs on oil. The world needs oil. Now, we don't need everything they've been pumping out, and there ain't no place for them to put it because nobody's using it, uh, but the world still needs oil, and uh, there may be a shake-up in the oil industry, uh, but the oil industry is not going to go away. The proof that the USO and other ETFs are behind today's plunge can be seen by looking at the June 2020 contract, which, although sharply down, is only sharply down in terms of double, not triple digits. CLM20 was down 16% today versus KL, uh, CLK20's 309%. Uh, the June futures contract is still trading above $20 a barrel. For now, uh, while, while this price isn't necessarily impressive, uh, to say the least, it's still more than $40 a barrel over the May 2020 futures. You go, well, yeah. If you go uh, negative 37 uh, plus 20, yeah, yeah, that's you're, you're doing you're doing okay. The, the June contract expires May 19th. Uh, we'll see. Is anything going to start rolling by May 19th? I don't know. I don't know. And is a better representation of the true oil market. Well, like I said, we'll see there. Uh, if, if this happens two months in a row, whew. <laughs> but but it could be like I said, uh, uh, possibly designed as a takeover move. Uh, in, instead of allowing the same people uh, that have been just rolling in the dough for decades now 
to switch it to somebody else. Who that somebody else, uh, we'll leave to you to decide. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot more to the article, uh, and, and there's links for other information here uh, that, that you may want to take a look at. But uh, uh, let me say, it was exciting. It was very exciting uh, today watching the oil uh, fall down there in the negative prices and, and uh, seeing the reaction. See, the uh, it actually oil price actually was the number one Twitter trend for a good while today, which... People on Twitter don't care about things like this. 420 West Coast. Woo! <laughs> all right. All, all of my uh, California, Oregon, and Washington buddies, spark it up! All right. <laughs> now, this should have been a, uh, a little um, precursor. A warning. A warning. to those holders of those contracts, and this was published a month ago, or almost a month ago, over on uh, cron.com. People should have seen this and said, i got to get rid of this contract now. i got to sell that paper. This paper's not going to be any good when the time comes up. But people weren't, I don't know what they were doing, walking around with their heads up their asses, I guess. But uh, here it is from uh, the from Cron.com by Jeffrey Bear and Jackie Davalos on May 23rd. Can't even give it away. One dollar gasoline is a warning for the economy. And this is for the economy at a wider scale. But if oil is your, is your primary business, you might want to have to take a look at something like this. London, Kentucky has become the first U.S. city, city to see pump uh, prices fall below $1 a gallon as corona-related lockdowns halt transit across the country. And it won't be the last. And it certainly wasn't the last. There's a lot more places now that it's under a dollar a gallon. And after today's fun, uh, there should be a lot more places with gasoline under a dollar a gallon, at least for a little while. Uh, yeah, so uh, get on out there, fill up all your gas cans and your vehicles and whatever else you can put gasoline in and fill them suckers up, because you never know. Uh, several others are poised to join the club in coming days as the pandemic crushes fuel demand and sends the economy to the brink of recession. Oh, that brink. I remember that brink. That happened a little while ago. We're well beyond that brink. <laughs> While cheap fuel usually spurs gas-guzzling Americans to hit the highways, the latest downturn in prices portends dark times ahead. And it does. You, can al you almost can't even give it away, said Paul Bingham, head transportation economist at IHS Market Limited. The price elasticity has totally changed. It's full-on demand destruction. Nationwide, pump prices are headed for the depths not seen since the Great Recession. Y'all remember that, right? It was only like 10 years ago, the Great Recession, 11, 12 years ago. <laughs> Retail gasoline is expected to average $1.90 a gallon in the next 72 hours and fall, below, uh, fall as low as $1.49 by mid-April. We're there. It's there. As the lowest level seen in 16 years, according to Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, uh, the downturn comes as large swaths of the country are under containment orders. Containment orders? You mean home imprisonment, don't you? Uh, <laughs> in an effort to curb the virus. Oh, yeah, that's what they want you to believe containment to curb the virus. That's what they want you to believe. Obviously, that's not what this is all about, but that's a whole other story. Uh, anyway, it says that's killed more than 15,000 15, people globally. Yeah, no, no. And I heard today it's like 41,000 dead in the U.S. of the coronavirus, which, of course, it's not of the coronavirus. Now, some of these people may have actually had coronavirus, if it actually exists. But most of them 
had nothing to do with coronavirus. Anybody that's dying now is being assigned coronavirus as, as a cause. Does it matter? <laughs> U.S. unemployment is set to rise to 30% this quarter. That's a little low ball there, ain't it? While the GDP may drop by 50%. That might be a little conservative, too. Uh, in, the, in that environment, low gasoline prices will not induce consumption in the way it typically does and may instead be yet another indicator of a struggling economy? Uh, that the, the economy is what needs the ventilator. The economy needs the life support. The economy is hosed by design. Illinois could be the next sub to see sub $1 fuel with Chicago wholesale gasoline selling at a record low uh, 20 cents on Monday morning. Uh, Bloomberg data shows gas stations in Ohio and Wisconsin are also possibilities if prices keep falling. Good news for you, Moose, if you need any gas for anything. Uh, pump prices are chasing gasoline futures, however. Uh, lower futures in New York plunged 63% in March alone as corona containment measures grip major U.S. cities, bringing the nation to an economic standstill. On average, about 28 cents in taxes and fees are added to the price of gasoline paid at the pump, according to, well, that's, that's a percentage, though, so though that, that will come down significantly as well. Uh, uh, it, uh, <laughs> added to the price at the pump, according to RJO Futures, with the retail price typically lagging futures about one week, so next Monday you should see gas at its minimum. Uh, prices would fall even further if it weren't for the food delivery drivers. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. They didn't know about this back then a month ago, but most of the, uh, many of the food processing plants are also shutting down. So food delivery drivers may also be out of work. And long-haul truckers, who are in high demand now, uh, that more Americans are self-isolating. Yeah, that's that's the phrase. <laughs> All right, you can check out the rest for yourself. But oh boy, this is—I—I—I I, I, I gotta believe it's all by design. It's all planned. It's all rigged exactly how they want it to be. But uh, you know, you never know. You know, you never know. Now, with with all of this um, Corona crap. Uh, going on around the world uh, with all, with all, well that's a, that's a month ago Java that, that's why uh, Java doctor saying you heard it slower than that um, in, in the chat here but, yeah that's a month that, that article is a month old so yeah <laughs> oh boy anyway so with all this corona crap going on around the world you haven't heard much from the green weenies the global warming alarmists the the people that want you to freak out about everything, global warming, human cause, global warming. You're not hearing about it. However, the green weenies do are secretly sitting in their homes, rubbing their hands and saying, oh yeah, this is the stuff, as there's no traffic out there. There's no factories producing out there. So there's none of that pollution going up. Of course, it's not really changing the climate in it all. It may be changing your air locally. Uh, you can clean your air to breathe, that's for sure. Uh, because without all those cars on the road, you people in the in the big cities aren't having to breathe in all that smog every day. But people want you to still believe in it. And they're saying, hooray for the corona! <laughs> This article from March 17th by Eric Warall on WTW or W W U W T. What's up with that? Uh, what's up with that dot com? Well, and it's what? It's W A K T, not what, as in what? Anyway, CNN touts the climate benefits of the Chinese Corona. <laughs> 
The climate alarmist community is repeatedly praising the alleged benefits of the deadly COVID-19 outbreak. There's an unlikely beneficiary of corona, the planet. This is from uh, Rebecca Wright on CNN on March 17th. Hong Kong factories were shuttered and streets were cleared across China's Hubei province as authorities ordered residents to stay home to stop the spread of the corona. It seems that the lockdown had an unintended benefit. Blue skies. The average, which I like blue skies. I like blue skies far more than I like gray smog-filled skies. Far more than I like chemtrailed skies. The average number of good quality air days increased 21.5% in February compared to the same period last year, according to China's Ministry of Ecology and Environment. And Hubei was not alone. Satellite images released by NASA and the European Space Agency show a dramatic reduction in nitrogen dioxide emissions. Nitrogen dioxide? I don't recall that being one of your primary... Anyway, uh, th those released by vehicles, power plants, and industrial facilities. In major Chinese cities between January and February, the visible cloud of toxic gas hanging over industrial powerhouses almost disappeared. This is the first time I've seen such a dramatic drop-off over such a wide area for a specific event, says Fu Lu, an air quality researcher at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. I'm not surprised because many cities nationwide have taken measures to minimize the spread of the virus. The CNN article was not an isolated anomaly. Other clap outlets, such as the L.A. Times or New York Slimes, uh, have praised the climate climate benefits of corona or cited uh, positive climate lessons we can learn from the economic damage caused by corona shutdown. They appear to want hardship caused by corona economic shutdowns to become a template for how we live all the time. The Times took a disgusting trope a step further and explored the positive sides of Corona killing off old people because they're climate skeptics. Climate skeptics! <laughs> I'm not a skeptic of the climate. I know there's climate. There's always been climate. There will always be climate. It may not be the climate you want, but... um humans are not causing climate change that I can guarantee you alright alright this next article <laughs> I, I would like to take the advice that NASA gave to its Mars lander and suggest this to anybody out there that's working for the government in any capacity in any capacity whether you're a politician or you're a uh, working at a government school, uh, a trash collector, a cop, uh, anybody working for the government in any, in any capacity, I would like to take NASA's advice to its lander and apply it to you. From the New York Post on uh, the 19th of March <laughs> by Molly Mansfield, NASA fixes Mars lander by telling it to hit itself with a shovel. You hear me, politicians? You guys are broke. You're messed up. There's something wrong with you. Hit yourself with a shovel and do it today. Do it every day. <laughs> hit yourself. And if you can't hit yourself hard enough with a shovel, get a friend to do that for you. <laughs> NASA engineers say they fixed the Mars lander by telling itself to hit itself with a shovel. The InSight lander, which is currently on Mars, faced unexpected problems when its 15-inch digging probe became stuck in the soil. A few, after a few failed attempts, the lander was freed, thanks to NASA encouraging it to hit itself with the jackhammer-like shovel. 
Oh, that's even better. Hit yourself with a jackhammer. <laughs> you hear me, politicians? <laughs> NASA revealed the news on Twitter, writing, A bit of good news from Mars. Our new approach of using robotic arm to push the mole appears to be working. Uh, the team, NASA JPL at DLR, uh, are excited to see the images and plan to continue this approach over the next few weeks. Popular science deemed the rescue operation as risky as it could have damaged the tether, which provides the power and communication from the lander that is attached to the back part of the mole. Now, I'm just going to say, if you happen to damage a politician by smacking him with a shovel, you know, that's all right. That That's really okay. Um, because they're, they're a dime a dozen. We, we can easily get... A bunch more of them. So go ahead. Feel free. Damage those politicians by hitting them with a shovel. They're, they're not working right. They're, they never worked right. They're, they're improper. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one second. What, 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 one second. There you go. I didn't, I didn't want a corona cough into your into your ears. <laughs> All right, this is on the metro.co.uk, posted February 21st. Uh, Jasper Hamill. Have you ever been driving down the road? In the south, probably, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, that, those areas. Um, and, and seen armadillos crossing the road, probably at night. That's when I used to see them. When I was driving out there on I-10, ripping on down the road between between Texas and Florida, yeah, armadillos just crossed the road, and they're you know whatever they are, about the size of a football, a little larger uh, armadillos. They get out there and they they run across the freeway there in the middle of the night. They don't they don't always do so well. Uh, one time I was driving down there somewhere, I believe it was Louisiana. And uh, there was a semi truck going up in front of me there, and uh, and and I seen this armadillo scurry on out there to the middle of the road, and uh, well, it got up underneath that truck's tires, and it flew out from the back of that truck and up over the top of my car and landed somewhere behind me. Uh, he wasn't doing too well. Anyway, <laughs> you don't want to hit this armadillo with your car. Ancient armadillo the size of a car is discovered in a dried-up riverbed. A farmer has found the 20,000-year-old remains of four prehistoric armadillos that grew to the size of a car at the bottom of a dried-out riverbed. Local media said the farmer stumbled across, across four glypodonts, glypodonts? Glypot don'ts, whatever, a heavily armored mammal that lived in the Pleistocene epoch and were relatives of present-day armadillos. The, uh, they developed in South America around 20 million years ago and spread to the southern regions of North America after the continents connected several million years ago. Or at least that's what they think happened. Um, <laughs> the large fossils were discovered in a dry riverbed in the Argentine capital, Buenos Aires, and experts from the Institute of Archaeological and Paleontological Investigations in the Pampa Quantenary, whatever, uh, will spend the next week extracting the remains. Archaeologist Pablo Messinaio uh, told reporters that the man named Juan de Dios Sota was taking his cows to graze in a nearby field when he noticed the odd shapes on the dried riverbed as they did not appear to the be the remains of horses or cows. Uh, Messi and Neo and a team of scientists arrived on the scene to dig out the prehistoric mega-beasts. So there you have it. Uh, don't hit that with your car! <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Vinny asks, why did the chicken cross the road? Uh, to show the armadillo it could be done, also known as a possum on the half shell. Thank you for that valuable information. 
<laughs> All right. Well, it's spring now. It's spring now. That means many of you are going to be doing gardens. Some of you probably already started. Some of you will be starting, depending on where you live and when your last frost is expected. I think it's around Mother's Day, which is, well, sometime next month is the normal um, day of, of beginning of planting in an outside area. But you know what? If you're growing tomatoes, there's a way around planting them every year. It's called Growing the Eternal Tomato. This is on uh, BackwoodsHome.com uh, from way back in 1999. May of June of 1999, issue 57, Leonard Trevor. It's an old story to longtime gardeners and a new story to novices. Each spring, you buy some superb tomato plants, set them out on May 1st or thereabouts, and then you mulch, water, and spray until about July 4th, depending on the part of the country uh, where you're living, when you pick your first real beauties of the season. The plants then thrive for the remainder of the summer, but... About, to, about the end of August, they will begin to wilt and die. This event is always marked with a tinge of nostalgia, as you wonder if you will ever see such wonderful tomatoes again. Of course, there is always next season, but you can never be sure if the new plants will come close to equaling the old ones. The new strains may not be to your liking, or there may be a problem with your plant's ability to resist wilt or cold weather. You wish you could keep the old plants forever. Actually, there's an easy way to keep your tomato plants alive forever. You can grow and enjoy the eternal tomato by investing just a few minutes in spending the extra sets. In the, in, in the bargain, you will have the earliest and best plants in your area next season. Something called uh, suckering. Suckering. Many old-time gardeners know about the process called suckering. This calls for you to break a stem or two from your tomato plants and plant them. Don't worry about your plants because breaking off the suckers doesn't hurt them. In fact, they'll grow a lot better without them. Here's how to do it. Examine your healthy and strong plants. Look for stems and limbs that look like forks of a slingshot. The only difference is that uh, that growing from the ex exact center of the fork, there will be a shoot called a sucker. That looks like healthy and vigorous, and it is because it's using uh, more than its rightful share of the nutrients of that plant. Break off the sucker by holding it one inch from the point where it joins the fork of the plant. Bend it forward, then bend it backward. The stem will snap off cleanly. Unlike other uh, stems of the plant, which will snap and then cling by a few fibers if you attempt to break them away. So you locate the suckers that uh, grow on a straight stem between the two strong tomato branches. Grab the sucker. Yeah, they got images here for you to look at. The suckers you break off should be no more than one foot in length. When you have the sucker in hand, put the stem in, uh, end into a jiffy pot or some other small container that's filled with potting soil. Push the end three inches three or so inches into the soil and use your fingers to pack soil tightly around the stem. Do eight or ten of these suckers if you have room. Water them generously, but do not have the stems standing in water. Set the containers in an old tray or uh, inside an aluminum pan, somewhere where they, where they can drain all right, and where they get good sunshine. Within five or so days, the stems will put roots and with a few weeks, you will have an independent plant that's ready to produce tomatoes. Quit messing with me here. Um, <laughs> when, when is the proper time to start sucker plants? Whenever the hell you want, as long as the parent plant is good and strong. When you start your tomato plants in early summer or late spring, you can set out a dozen or so plants. Uh, then two or three weeks later, you can break off a dozen or two suckers from those 12 plants. 
set these new plants out in two to four weeks, you can break the suckers off those plants as well in the first sucker plants and their parent plants. In short, within 10 or 12 plants, by midsummer, you will have 100 plants. That's a lot of tomatoes. Um, <laughs> all right, there's more information here in the article, but I think you get the idea. Uh, and like I said, there are images here to show you exactly uh, how and where to uh, do the suckering at and, and uh, explain to you better. And, and what, a, what a great thing to do. I'm not sure if, if you can do suckering with other kind of plants or not, um, but uh, growing the eternal tomato sounds awesome. All right. All right, I'm not going to go too deeply into this next article because, well, we all see it. I think at this point we all see it. Um, Moose Girl says you can do suckering with other types of plants. So terrific. I will uh, keep that in mind. If I actually... Oh, you could do it with weed too. All right, sweet. Um, <laughs> because uh, we all see what's going on out there. And I think we all know that this is, is the case. Uh, but let me just uh, give you a little bit here. It's on Zero Hedge, posted March 22nd. In sweeping power grab, the Department of Justice seeks the ability to detain people indefinitely without trial, which, of course, they do already anyway, but they want actual permission and not to have it do at all in black sites. So there it is. In a sweeping power grab, the Department of Justice has asked Congress for their ability, or for the ability, to go directly to chief judges in order to detain people indefinitely without trial during emergencies. And, of course, without charges, actual charges. The move is part of a recent push to expand government powers during the corona-planned-demic. According to Politico, uh, which has reviewed documents that details the DOJ's request to lawmakers on this and a host of other topics, including state of limitations, asylum, and how court hearings are conducted. The move has tapped into a broader fear among civil liberties advocates. Wouldn't that be everybody? Civil liberties advocates? Wouldn't that be pretty much everybody? Uh, anyway... And, and and Trump critics, uh, that the president will use a moment of crisis. A moment? <laughs> I think it's a little more than a moment. A moment of crisis to push for controversial policy changes. Already, he has cited the pandemic, the pandemic, as a reason for the heightened broader, or, or heightened border restrictions, broader border restrictions, and restrict them as restricting asylum claims. He has also pushed for further tax cuts as the economy withers, arguing that it would soften the financial blow to Americans. And even without policy changes, Trump has vast emergency powers that he could legally deploy right now to try to slow Corona Bona phony stuff. Exactly, Rob. Who are these civil liberty antagonists? Uh, anyway, there's there's uh, there's a bunch more to the story, but like I said, I think we all understand that this is going on. And if you don't, if if you're unaware of this or just plain don't believe it, go ahead and read the article. Uh, it's got links to the actual documentation that that you can look at. Uh, I mean, if you don't believe Zero Hedge, you don't have to. It's not really from Zero Hedge. Is it? No. <laughs> and all of those documents well, with links to other sites uh, that, that you may trust. I don't know who you are and what you believe. If you're a clap believer, then uh, then you can find all of that stuff. Um, well, one thing on this fabulous 420 day uh, that comes from March 21st, a month ago, um, that was good. And this should not just be considered an isolated thing, even though it's not this way everywhere. But it should be considered this at all times. 
whether it's business or private. But here it is. From uh, Fox29.com. L.A. cannabis business businesses deemed essential during pandemic, during pandemic. Among the Los Angeles businesses deemed essential and urged to remain open are those with city permits to sell cannabis, authorities said. Under the mayor's safer at home order, not a suggestion, order, cannabis, cannabis businesses are deemed essential and those with temporary approval are authorized to stay open in the city of Los Angeles, the city's Department of Cannabis Regulation. They have a whole department for cannabis regulation. The city's Department of Cannabis Regulation said in a corona update, that means cannabis dispensaries with temporary approval uh, may have employees working at their facilities. Uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti issued a safe-at-home emergency order Thursday, ordering all Los Angeles residents to stay inside their residences. See, it's an order. It's not a suggestion, as I've seen some people say, oh, this ain't charity. It's a, just a suggestion. No, it's an order. And if you go outside, they can club you down, throw you in a cage, kill you, do anything they want, because you're violating some idiot writing something down on a piece of paper. Which is the same as always, you know, but this is a specific thing to force you to be uh, imprisoned in your home. Anyway, so Los Angeles residents to stay inside their residences and limit, limit movement to that which is absolutely freaking necessary to take care of essential needs. Thankfully, weed. I feel the need. The need for weed. <laughs> the order noted certain business operations and activities are exempt from the provisions of this order on the grounds that they provide services that are recognized to be critical to the health and well-being of the city. Weed is critical to the health and well-being of the city. Maybe to the city's residents. I don't know about the city, but that's what the thing says. The order listed as exempt cannabis dispensaries or any related and or ancillary health care services manufacturers and suppliers. So, toke up, LA buddies. That means you, Prince. Spark up one. Spark one up. It's 420 after all. <laughs> Sorry, we got, I don't know. We got, I think we got, we got two more articles. All right. From UPI.com, in the odd news section, posted March 23rd, Colorado State Park say, thank you for not stealing our toilet paper. Now, I haven't really been paying close attention to the toilet paper drama that occurred a month ago or so. Is it over now? Is there, is there toilet paper in the stores once again? Can you wipe your ass? Without worry at this point. <laughs> but the Colorado State Parks, which I think are now all closed anyway, thank you for not stealing their toilet paper. They, they weren't all closed a month ago. Those that haven't stolen toilet paper at our Colorado State Parks, thank you. <laughs> uh, on um, Colorado Parks and Wildlife is offering an unusual message of gratitude to state state park visitors. Just thanks those for not for not being a, a thief and stealing the paper. An electronic sign at the entrance to Boyd Lake State Park, which thus far has remained open, well that was a month ago, amid the corona pandemic, thanks visitors for not raiding the park's bathroom for supplies. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Look at that, a fish. Give me that fish. All right. Okay. And finally, lastly, but certainly not leastly, from the city of New York. <laughs> and and I, I don't, I wouldn't say that only in New York would you get the, New York City would you get this story. 
you probably get it in other places too. San Francisco, L.A., Chicago, uh, various other cities uh, across the uh, country, maybe around the world. I don't know. You might get a story like this one on the New York Post dot com by Nadine Di Nino, uh, March twenty fourth. New York City declares war on rim jobs in graphic health department memo. <laughs> That's right. New York City's Department of Health is bending over backwards to warn the public about a whole new threat. Rim jobs. The city's health, <laughs> the city's health agency issued graphic guidelines for safe sex practices during the corona pandemic. Saturday, and while many were quick to take jabs at the agency for labeling masturbation safer than sex, with a partner, most missed the backdoor rim shot. Yes, the city specifically called out rimming, or using the tongue on the anal rim of another person for sexual pleasure, as particularly dangerous in the jaw-dropping section of the public safety alert. Rimming, mouth on anus, might spread corona. A virus in feces may enter your mouth. The city warned in section titled, Take Care During Sex. Eagle-eyed Twitter users naturally had a field day with the bizarre bullet point, whipping it into the butt of jokes online. The New York City Health Department has a document about sex and corona that includes a statement about rimming. One person wrote, Stay at least six feet from other people and be sure not to lick anyone's ass. <laughs> Day 13 of, of quarantine. My parents read the New York City Corona sex guidelines and are now discussing rimming at the dinner table. Need evacuation as soon as possible. <laughs> Others were shocked that the Department of Health didn't let this particular sex act fall through the cracks and, in fact, added it right after the section on kissing. The New York City Corona sex advice goes from kissing straight to rimming ass, which just goes to show how badly New York City was begging for a plague, another joked. Some, however, were uh, impressed by the, that the city poo-pooed the sex act, uh, commonly known as a rim job, which is popular with many same-sex partners. And not same-sex partners, for that matter. Um, important, in, inclusive, informational, and here for this, one person said, the Department of Health reiterated advice to observe social distancing, prevent the spread of corona on Saturday, uh, days before the Big Apple became the epicenter of the virus, with more than 13,000 cases. Uh, it's, yeah, well, well, well beyond that. 125 deaths, yeah, well beyond that now. Anyway, maybe they were all rimming each other, and that's why the, the case is shot to the, through the roof. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the agency urged city dwellers to remain... Oh, I do that. Uh, you, you are your safest sex partner, the document read. Masturbation will not spread corona, especially if you wash your hands and any sex toys with soap and water for at least 20 seconds before and after. I'd say maybe you want to wash them a little longer after. <laughs> the agency, however, did not uh, knock bumping uglies with a virus-free partner or live-in mate. Uh, the next safest partner is someone you live with, the document continued, having close contact, including sex, with a small circle of people. Did what now? You're going to have sex with a small circle of people. <laughs> Helps prevent spreading corona. The document also encouraged seeking out sex in virtual form, including advising sex workers to turn to the web. If you meet, usually meet your sex partners online or make a living by having sex, consider taking a break from the in-person dates, the document added. Video dating, sexting, or chat rooms, not this chat room, um, may be options for you. 
Uh, so those looking for rim jobs, best to try a Google search. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, go ahead and recommend um, searching Google for rim jobs. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Yow. Okay, on that note, um, that's it. I'm done here for today. Thank you all for tuning in. That's uh, been a wonderful time. Uh, hopefully you're all doing fine out there, all doing well. You still got money to do whatever it is you need to do, pay your bills, buy food, uh, pay for other crap that you got to pay for. Uh, and hopefully you're feeling good, feeling well, feeling healthy. I hope. I hope. Uh, so, yeah. Everybody have a great week. I'll be back again next week. Next week will be, by the way, episode 69 <laughs> of the Grim Leftovers show. Uh, and check the schedule on RealLibertyMedia.com for all the rest of the shows that come up throughout the week. There may be surprises. You don't know. I don't know. Talk to you all later. Peace! <laughs>